Hello everybody, it's me Ross and welcome to another edition of the League One Lowdown where I speak to fans, journalists and podcasters and get their say on the season ahead in League One. And today I'm joined by Matt from the New York Talk, the podcast covering Rotherham United. Matt, first of all, thank you very much for joining me and welcome back to League One. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'm not so thankful for the welcome back to League One. I prefer to, to wait a few years for that, but I suppose, you know, we're here now, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, introduce yourself. Uh, let us know about your supporting life as a Rotherham fan and, and the podcast as well. Yeah, I've been supporting Rotherham twenty four, twenty five years, something like that now. Uh, and I always say, watching Rotherham, you've, we've just had everything. We've had two double promotions, two administrations, a couple of Wembley wins in there. Um, if if it's, if it's happened in football, it's almost certainly happened to Rotherham United in the last in my twenty five years of watching Rotherham. Uh, but it's never boring. We, we, we are rather than the, the, the Yo-Yo Club, the League One, the Championship, which means it's fun, but it's also heartbreaking at the same time. But that's football. You know, if we didn't have these moments in football, we wouldn't really be bothered about watching it. It's uh, it, nothing better than following Rotherham United for me. It's great. <laughs> I'm sure you know for the podcast, it's good that you're not ever got a dull season. You know, it's promotion or relegation and all that sort of stuff. So I'm sure the podcast has always been fun. It is. I think something like in the last nine seasons, we've finished in the top top six or bottom six of the division we've been in. Um, so it's always we've always got something to cover, whether it's unhappy fans, a big win, a big loss, um, a losing this big player, because when we get relegated and things such as that, it's, we always have a good laugh. We try to make it not, not too serious, in it? But why, why are we taking it so serious? So it's a good laugh, and it's all, it's all about enjoying it, isn't it? Definitely, and um, well, let's talk about the transfer window. We're recording this um, just on 21st of July, so we've got still got a month and a half mm. of the transfer window. The big talking point is Matt Crooks. It was linked to town. It sounds like he's not going to be heading there. It looks like he's going to go into the championship. Um, your thoughts on the window as a whole so far? Uh, not been so busy for Rotherham, but you're probably still waiting if you're going to have those players still who are playing in the championship for you last year. Yeah, exactly. The big, the big two are probably going to leave. Well, certainly Matt Crooks is going to leave. Uh, Michael Smith will probably leave uh, if a championship club's in come, club comes in with the right money. And it is a matter of waiting. I think as the as stupid it sounds, the Euros had an impact because we're waiting for clubs in the Premier League to spend in the Championship. Some of the Championship may fill us down a little bit, uh, and I think that's that's hampered our window because, like every other club, you want to get it sorted, you want it done and dusted before day one of the season. Um, and in the past, when we came down last time, we sold Will Bolts and Semi Ajay to uh, West Brom and Cardiff pretty quickly. You know, but again, by the start of the season, we had the base of, of, of our squad there. Whereas this time, I said, well, well, what we two, just over two weeks before the season starts, we've made two signings. One of them is our, they're going to be our third choice goalkeeper. Um, and the other one is Shane Ferguson, who I think is a really, really good signing uh, from Millwall. A very solid championship player. Um, I've, it's one of those players that you don't really notice in a good way. He just goes, goes about and does his job. Um, and I think he's a really solid signing. It's interesting, we've had no real whispers or rumours of people coming into us. You normally get, oh, he's been linked with us, he's coming, he's this, that, other. There's been nothing, it's been really, really quiet, uh, which is really, really unusual. But I think that's general. I think the transfer winners in general, I know it's switching Wigan, the other two teams in our league have gone big in bringing numbers in. Uh, so that you know, but it's been really quiet for everybody else. It feels like um, hopefully that will change for us in the next two weeks. It's got to change because we're short in about four different areas. And it's it needs some money, but with Crooks probably going, I think that'll kickstart the window for us. Hopefully, have you? Um, has any been big players that have left, or any players you know who were playing in the championship last season for you? You know, players gone out of contract anything like that? Any key players there have gone? Not really. No, we've been quite lucky. The only one that was out of contract was Matt Sunday who was our right-back. Um, but he sort of dropped down the pecking order. He, he was he's a young American kid who we signed from Man U two years ago. And he's come on leaps and bounds. He, we played Everton in the FA Cup and he gave Luca Dinia an absolute nightmare. It, it was, it, on our podcast, it was voted the, the individual performance of the season. Uh, he was that good on that day. But he's a young kid. He's inconsistent. Uh, it would have been nice to keep him, but he's gone to Preston. But he's got a championship move. Don't begrudge him that. Uh, and I think we've got Wes Arden. He's our best right back, and I love Wes Arden. I think Wes Arden could, could go on to be one of the best, best right backs in League One. He's defensively excellent, solid, going forward, very, very good. Um, we've got the base of a good squad. If we if we had the numbers, we wouldn't need to impress, but we just we've got like 18 first team players. We need to strengthen just in depth. Our first eleven is brilliant, 
but a couple of injuries and we then start to look in real trouble. And we've already lost two centre-backs through injury already. So we're already in trouble. Well, that's my next question is, um, which sort of players that, you know, as town fans, we need to watch out for for Rotherham next season. I know once again, you could be making some new additions. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. Matt Crook's probably going to be leaving. Like Curtis mm. Tilt was one of those players that was possibly going to be joining town a few mm. seasons ago, but just never happened. Um, he's now at Rotherham. You know, he's just had a season of championship. Um, for yourself, what's the, the key players? Well, I think we're going to be playing you in November. So that a mm. lot of seasons have gone by by then. But yeah. um, any players that stand out for you for Rotherham? Uh, well, until uh, he came 80 months ago, just literally just before lockdown, um, and he played one game, wasn't match fit, looked terrible. Um, he went out on loan last season to Wigan and played a full yeah. season. He came back in to close season, and whilst an international break with Jamaica, he's torn his hamstring and out until October. Um, so he's one of the <laughs> he's one of the players that we're, that we're now missing. Um, players look out for Dan Barley is a, a central midfield in League One last time. It took him probably two or three months to get into swing of that of what, what we wanted him to do. But when he did, it was just unplayable. He, he can ping a ball 40, 50 yards. He can play the nice, simple pass. He's really quite good at breaking the game up uh, so he can do a few different jobs. He struggled a little bit in championship. I think he got found out a little bit. Uh, but, but I think it was a really good learning experience for him. Um, and in the championship, he will completely flourish in the central midfield. But then we need something to back up. It worked with him and Crooks last time in league. Well, if Crooks was going to go, which he is, then we need to find something to replace him Crooks has, what he does, Crooks does so many different things. It's <laughs> difficult to quantify Crooks a little bit. Um, but we need to fill that gap a little bit. Hopefully up front we've got a young kid coming through, Josh Coyote, who spent last season on loan at Carlisle. Um, it's, as, as, as with all clubs, you want your young players to come through and to shine. He's got all the tools. He's, he's not big, but he is strong. He's quite quick, supposedly quite a good finisher. Um, and Fred Ladapo as well who's a very, very good League One striker as well. There's goals in this squad, uh, and that's without any additions yet. So there's a lot of positives going forward if we get the next little bit of business right. Um, yeah, we'll wait and see on that. And um, let's talk about Rotherham. Another season in League One. Um, they'll be one of the teams that definitely will be in the promotion mix. Are you thinking that as well? Mm. As Rotherham fans, you, you won't want anything less than that, really. <laughs> it's what we expect. We've been League One. We've got to go up. <laughs> no, it's it's tough. We I think when we when we ended our last season on the podcast, we sort of went through League One. And thought they they expect to be up there. They expect to be up there. And there were about fourteen teams that, for, if I was in their fan shoes, I'd be thinking we can challenge for playoffs here. And there's only obviously only six teams that can be up there. You know, a couple more was the challenge for it. It's it, we as we've been in League One a lot. You know, we've, we've been in the League One a lot of times. This is one of the strongest. League One from one to twenty-four. This is probably the strongest League One I've ever seen. Um, you know, we, we go back to when Wolves got promoted in 2013, 14, but Wolves were the best team. That was, you know, there weren't many other teams in there. Um, when we got promoted last time, it was a pretty strong League One. But you guys, Ipswich started well but tailed off. Sunderland weren't very good that season. Um, you know, it was we, we come into getting promoted, which nobody thought we we're going to come. I can't, I can't see the being. I know Wickham might be up there again this season, but I can't see a team coming from nowhere like Wickham did that season. There's too many strong teams in this division this season. Um, if you're off me playoffs right now, I'd take it. But again, from our, our, our season won't potentially start till September till the transfer window shuts because of how late we're having to leave our, our work. Um, so we... I'll have a better idea on 1st of September, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting a lot of people on the spot here and uh, putting, you know, it's still early days in, mm. in, the, in the summer. Anything can happen in terms of players leaving, mm. signing and stuff like that. You know, loan signings are still going to be possible yeah. thing from Premier League sides. Um, as an outsider to Nitrous Town, uh, what's your thoughts on Town's business so far? We've got new owners, Ed Sheeran, sponsorship and all that. Um, Mark Ashton, who's a new CEO, Paul Cook, first seat, full season in charge. As an outsider, what, what are you thinking of town? Uh, from an outsider, Ipswich are the ones that are worrying me, are really worrying me. Um, you've got Paul Cook, who's an excellent manager. He's, you know, he's, he should be in the championship. Um, and the, 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 the recruitment looks solid. Uh, and that's, that's what I know. Obviously, I ended up getting Matt Crooks. But going for somebody like Matt Crooks tells me that Ipswich know what type of player they're trying to get for. They want somebody with experience who knows how to get, like, get out of this league. Um, and you look at clubs like Sunderland, even if it's in the past, or Sunderland in the past, it's been quite a scattergun approach to signings. 
You know, Will Griggs a really good player. Oh, Sunderland will spend loads of money on him. For you, James Norwood uh, scored loads of goals for Tranmere in League Two. We brought him in; it didn't completely work out. It seems like a much more joined up way of thinking for Ipswich this season. Um, which, if we weren't in League One, would be great. <laughs> um, but it does worry me. Um, for that, it's been interesting to see what happens. You know, if if we don't, because it's a new ownership, if you get two months into the season and things aren't quite quite going right, how much patience are they going to have with Paul Cook? I I think they should. Whatever happens, I think you should, they should stick with him. But these are things that can happen. You know, look at Blackpool when at last season they were they were in a really bad position till Christmas time, I think, and then they got then they took off. Uh, would Ipswich board have that patience? With because the new to the news of the game, would they have that patience? That's that for me. That would be the only way that that could go wrong. If that, if that I know it's early to say that, uh, but Ipswich are the ones really are the ones that worry me in terms of uh, going up properly, uh, challenging for the title. Never mind challenging top six. And of course, as you mentioned, you know this is wide open League One. Mm. A lot of people calling it Championship 2.0. You know, they say getting mm. out of the Championship is hard, but getting out of League One is going to be yeah. hard this year. And it should sound, you know, the big club in League One, but there's some other big clubs in this mm. division. Um, you know, when we face you, uh, last time we faced you, we lost both times. I know Matt Cripps <laughs> bullied us in that 2-0 <laughs> defeat at Portland Road. Mm. Um, what do you think these sort of games? Once again, it's still early to discuss because different signs will be happening. But um, when Town play Rotherham, what sort of games do you reckon you expect? Um, I think that's the good thing about us was just we've got two or three different ways of playing. The way we, like I said, beat you, when we beat you two 0 and bullied you at your place, we can do that. But at the same time, that's not necessarily our best way of playing. We played last season in Championship as eventually for the three five two. I think we're really good. Pack, packed out the midfield. Uh, Matt Crooks just behind Michael Smith as a ten roll. It worked pretty well, other than, you know, barring a few injuries and a crazy schedule, we'd have probably stayed up. Um, but then, so far in pre-season, he's played 4-4-2. Um, I'm a big fan of 3-5-2, and I hope we go back to that, because I think it gives you so much more flexibility. Um, and I think a lot of times when we played 4-4-2 in League One, last time when we played MK Dons when they were struggling, Wimbledon when they were struggling, and Wickham, if they, they were able to sit in and hit us on the break, because we pushed and pushed and pushed, because... In League One, we're supposed to be one of the better teams. They just sat back and were able to hit us on the break. Uh, I hope that's not that. Good. I hope that's not going to be a weakness again. My concern is that it will be a weakness. So if, if a clever man like Paul Cook, Paul Cook, it don't matter to him. He'll just he just wants to win a game of football. If he needs to sit in for a bit, he'll sit in for a bit. Um, he's not sort of snobbish and thinking we've got to go gung ho. So it's going to be interesting to see how we set up because it's it, again it's all still up in the air. Uh, interesting to know well are your signings, how Ipswich are going to set up. Because uh, Paul Paul Cook was a very pragmatic manager, three or four different ways of playing, uh, and I think that's that's what gets team promoted. You can't play four four two every week or or whatever. You can't play the same eleven week in week out in league. When you've got to have a few different ways of playing, a few different players, and uh, for us, that's what we're good at. Uh, and I think from again, it's which point of view, I think that'll work, work in good still with Paul Cook doing that as well. And of course, the big thing. Fans, then we back in the grounds. I'm sure you're looking forward to going back to the New York Stadium. Not New York, in Rotherham. But uh, Matt, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining me, my friend. Not a problem at all. It's been a pleasure. And I uh, hope everybody's enjoyed watching. Town fans, Rotherham fans, let us know in the comments down below your feelings going into League One. And there we go. I'll see you next time for the League One Lowdown. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>